Good morning, everybody. Well, here's the treehouse. We are waking up in this thing. I uh, just finished up our first cup of coffee. What a cool place. Let me go show you what's going on outside here. So here's a little deck with uh, incredible mountain view. Check out those peaks right up there. I don't know if you can see those right there. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful blue skies, not a cloud in the sky. We call it Cavu up here. Clear above, visibility unlimited. Valdez is just one of these uh, snow paradise destinations. That's kind of how you brush your teeth with just a cup and a toothbrush. So there's no, uh, no water up here, but there is power. Let me show you a little bit around here. Beautiful this place is. Such gorgeous, gorgeous views. Satisfying. So, spent the night right up there in the loft. Have some blow up mattresses and sleeping bags. It was nice. Uh, the fireplace, really, really warm. And then we uh, turned it down and it was just right. So, all these isn't very cold. I think it's only like in the I think it's in the 40s right now, maybe the, the high 30s. We're gonna head into Valdez now, get some fuel for the plane, grab a bite to eat. We could actually cook up some breakfast in here, but we've decided to uh, go into Valdez and see what that's all about. Let's go take a look at this uh, tree fort cabin from the outside. I gotta show that to you. By the way, great stickers around here. Just, it's got definitely that ski bum feel to it. Yeah, check this out, stairs. Huge, massive trees here. Look at that. Look at that school bus down there. Pray for snow and salmon. <laughs> very, very Alaskan. That looks like a bit of a RV modified bus. I can see a flue sticking out the window for the chimney. Ah, oh, man, look at these trees here. It's so incredible. Looks like there's a, the start of probably another cabin right there. Pilings in, looks like, and looks like beams are being pulled across. Awesome, very cool. All right, guys, time to head to Valdez, see what that's all about. Get my Columbia hat on, my faithful hat. It's been with me all winter long. Pair of shades, cut down on those UV rays, shining in the eyes. There's a little Casey Neistat little, that's how, uh, that's how, that's not what I would look like if I was uh, in shades at all times. But uh, I just can't do that too well. Well, anyways, let's head to Valdez and see what that's all about. See you on the road. Some quick fuel here in Valdez. See all the guys are topping off for a day of riding out in the mountains. Alrighty, great uh, omelets in Valdez over at uh, Old Town Burgers. Great spot to go if you're in Valdez and uh, not sure where to go have breakfast. Hey, okay over here. Well, we're headed back to another day of chitin. Hopefully doing a little bit of a paragliding with the wings that we have. Hopefully the wind isn't too crazy for that. That's where all the oil from the Alaska North Slope goes before it gets hauled out of Alaska. That's the end of the pipeline right there across the other side of the bay. Got all those storage tanks to fill. And then from there, they're put onto tankers and go to all the refineries, probably down south and maybe even across to uh, Asia and whatnot. Quite cool. That's pretty cool. Quick stop at the Valdez Airport. This is gonna be the site of the Valdez Stole Flying in about a month and a half. Anybody wondering what that's all about, what that looks like, right behind me here. Huge ramp, lots of room for airplane parking. Quick little stop at Glacier View Park in Valdez, just checking to see for a site we can land here on the lake pull up and ask for the fuel truck to come out and give us uh, some fuel perhaps on the way out because you can't really land at the airport restricts your fuel I got to show you something this is called uh, Keystone Pass Keystone Valley I think but check this beautiful waterfall what a stunning That was
was beautiful. Thanks, Scott, for stopping. There's the entrance of the pass right there. Lots of wind, but uh, absolutely beautiful. Scott, is Keystone Pass, is that what it's called? Keystone Pass, or Keystone Valley. Absolutely stunning. That's what happened to all the snow in Valdez. And yeah, I did. When you're out kind of in the middle of nowhere, you get real creative. Let me show you an Alaskan hot tub right here. So, or actually this could be just a bathtub, really. That's how you make the water warm. You just fill it up and you, uh, oh, who we got in there? Mark. This also could be a massive kettle for stew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, so yeah, that's pretty, uh, pretty nifty. Nifty, nifty. Is this the hot tub you're talking about? Do you actually use it? Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Probably not going to use it, but keep it for next. When I come okay. out here, next, I don't want to carry the water. Okay. I don't want to worry about going to town, so like, okay. have one ready to meet me with, with fuel. Do you think this bus worked once in a while? Later on. I love that. It did at one point, yeah. Oh yeah, it's all sunny now. You can get this cam this strap through in and out all day long, you know, but it gets cold, you gotta do it with gloves on, and it gets ice in there, and like you cannot do this operation when you need it most, you know. So they yeah, the seat belt, man. We're gonna do it with gloves on, you know, click, full slack, you know, bam, shit. Thing whole thing should be a big right. solid uh, bundle ready to roll, you know. So yeah, we've uh, been fighting with systems, you know, to hold skis and hold kites and it's come a long way, but we'll give it a, another shot here. Well, we met uh, Colin and uh, Tony Hi. right over there yesterday from Seattle. They come up to uh, just do this whole backcountry thing every, is it every year or just every? Yeah. Yeah, snow kiting and backcountry skiing, heli skiing, you name it. There's not too many people that do that. So these are some really, they probably should just live up here really, you know, uh, yeah. right? It's so easy to come up. It's yeah. so easy to you get, the, Seattle. you get the best of both worlds then, right? I feel like everything I've done is just preparation for this and coming up here, you know? Right on. And bigger and better, and there's so many good people up here. I like to be around, you know, good people that are doing this and seeing what they're doing, and I'm like, wow, what's that? I want to do that, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, being, you know, Pete, you know, you know, Scott, these guys are just top of their game, and it's great to watch it, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, try and learn from them. How many, how many years have you been coming up here? It's only, my first expedition was what? 2012 was the Germans. The Germans, yeah, but before that, I met Obadiah. Uh, so that was probably 15 years ago. Okay. And we've been yeah, doing it on and off and kind of getting more committed every yeah. year. That's awesome. The more retired you get, the more you come up. Yeah, well, you know, still working super hard, but the more time I get at work, the more vacation I get. That's true. So actually, I've maxed out my vacation. I don't get any more. But okay. <laughs> that, I get plenty, so that's what I do with it. Right it's, on. Uh, kind of this is... I sprinkle in little days during the winter, and then this is the big kahuna, you know. So you guys um, well, just keep these sleds just parked somewhere when you guys are down south, or what? Yeah. Put them yeah. in storage? We put them in storage, yeah. That's we, pretty hardcore right there. I mean, you're up here for two weeks a year. Two weeks a year. And I you know. got two sleds for that. And I bought a brand new one. Look so at that thing. I can only use a 175. I mean, that's like, I don't even know if that's legal. <laughs> it, it shouldn't be, especially in my hands. <laughs> That thing can land you in a hospital I'm real worthy. fast. Yeah. I'm not worthy of that machine, so I... Take you places where you really don't want to be. That, that's right. You got to be right. really careful it's with scary, that. scary, man. Sure is a good looking sled, though. If you do get that stuck, you might as well call in the helicopter at that point. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a long day. Yeah. Got a huge, massive tunnel, small seat. It's probably it's a, a lightweight. Um, oh, probably a, I'm wondering if that's a custom fuel tank. Probably is. Probably a custom seat, too. Super small. Great for hauling some gear, though, on the tunnel. Sharp looking sled. I'm going to go down that one, actually. That way? Oh, um, that's smoother. Nice. Yeah.
just put the kite away. Oh. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. I got back here as soon as I jumped out of the car. All right, we're going paragliding. <laughs> For paragliders and kites, all that material, want to keep it out of the sun. And um, when you walk away, you want to just be organized and um, keep from blowing around. How was the landing up there for the guys? It's beautiful. Okay guys, we are now gonna be, I'm on skis right there. As you can see, I'm gonna be going up. Okay, ready for this? Woo! Yeah, I'll let go of it. Moment of truth. All right, three, two, one. Wow. Beautiful. Well, the tally made it down, no problem at all. Collins next, out of Seattle, Washington, Valdez, Alaska. Wow, this is so cool. You basically just start skiing and then eventually just get taken off your feet. What's wrong with what, what's wrong with this? Oh, I'm just absolutely blown away. My 12 year old is about ready to launch off this mountain. I mean, my 11 year old down there to the lake on a wing. This is his first basically solo day. He's uh, kited on the lake, but that's about it. I've got a few things that are uh, going through my mind. I'm a little concerned, a little worried, but uh, you gotta let him do that flight when the conditions are right. And it's like calm, gorgeous, as you can see. He can't really beat this. Absolutely stunning. Vitaly's uh, been launching off. Ben over there is getting ready to make a flight down and uh, I hope it works out. I hope it's gonna be okay. I hope he doesn't forget to flare. But you can't pull those brakes too early, otherwise the wing stops flying and you go straight down. A little worry dad moment. <laughs> Okay, now back to the 
It's kind of tough when there's two instructors. <laughs> they all are kind of like, you know. Well, Mark just did his first flight down. There he is. Yep. How you doing, Mark? Good. You feeling good about it? Yeah. Is it fun? Yep. All right, he's back at it. Stay left, Mark. Don't go in the deep snow. Mark, stay left. Let's go what? on the snowmobile tracks. All right, you're landing the pond. Flare. Flare. <laughs> <laughs> good job. Yeah! Woohoo! <laughs> That's <pretty> awesome! <laughs> yeah, isn't that cool? My teenager up there launching on a paramotor wing. No, excuse me, paragliding wing. My teenager up there launching on a paragliding wing. That is like one of those satisfying experiences, one of them proud dad moments. No jump! No jumping! Woo! <laughs> 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 nice 
recovery there. Even with Scott taking a stumble. All right, back to Wasilla. You guys want to go for a Good to meet everybody. Bye, Tony. Bye, Virginia. Thanks for uh, dinner last night. Parking lot Pete. Woo! I learned that name. That's a cool name. I wish I had a cool name like that. <laughs> well, let's move in. You get one. <laughs> Thanks for the hospitality. You're welcome. Thanks for the treehouse. Yeah, you're welcome. That was, uh, I don't think I've ever spent the night in a treehouse, so there's so many first time experiences out here this trip. Um, I just uh, don't know what to say, but other than a big thank you. Stick with me. You're welcome. It's an amazing special place. Good to have you guys. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to try to beat the okay. beat the darkness. Space, space light. Thanks. <laughs> High five for the road. Woo! Virginia, cheers on that flight. Bye. Bye-bye. Safe travel. Thank you. Okay. GoPro's on. So Scott let me land his 185 on the lake and uh, I was so caught up in that that I forgot to turn on my GoPros for the landing. <laughs> I was so excited, you know? It's actually the first time I got to land a 185. Gear down. Yeah, I forgot to put the gear down. Fortunately, that uh, gear's fixed for now. Scott's got amphibious floats, so things change up here in the summertime. But uh, absolutely epic trip, 200 miles visibility, 9,000 feet, shooting right across all of those mountains and glaciers. You can see them right from where we're standing right now. Boys are already in the car. Scott, thank you very much. Uh, this is like the paramotor, paragliding, kiting inventor almost. I mean, literally. No, so if you're in Alaska and you're into that kind of stuff, this is the guy to call, Skydance Aviation. It's got the most beautiful 185 in Alaska. It's probably the most like well taken care of one. It's got like, like Lamborghini seats in this thing. Uh, absolutely stunning airplane. I hope to be able to buy it off of Scott one day. <laughs> Once Scott upgrades, upgrades to the next one. <laughs> be working hard. That's Scott heading back to Lake Hood. That's a home base for uh, 357 Lima Charlie. Man, that is one beautiful 185. Anybody else agree with me on that one? Guys, thanks for joining. You know the drill. If you haven't subscri subscribed already, please consider to do so. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one sharing my beautiful state of Alaska and all the incredible things that we get to witness and be part of living in such a great state. The land of the frozen chosen. The last frontier. Uh, anyways, closing out the weekend. Back to work tomorrow. But living in Alaska, man, oh man, I just, I love it up here so much. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for joining Adventure More and Crave Life.